Okay, so we're picking up from where we left off about working in Moodle on Wednesday, February 3rd? 4th? 4th? Thank you. Okay, um, now that I've lost track. So here are your video lectures and support materials. Okay, any questions about that? Alrighty. Then what I'd like to do um, to continue on this flow for you, if it helps you, is to launch in design demo in design a little bit, right? Maybe you have some questions about it. And just show you once again, because by Wednesday you need to have your first chapter assignment completed. All right? All right. Um, all right, so to launch InDesign here on the computers, there's an application folder in the dock. And um, you go to Adobe, locate InDesign, and launch the software. Can everybody see in the back there? Can you see in the back there? Okay. Any questions? Yeah. You know, um, oh, I'm so glad you brought that up. Thank you. Um, in the DAC lab, there, what's going to happen in the DAC lab in the beginning while you're turning on the computer and loading the software? They'll help you. No problem. That's a no-brainer for them. What's going to happen if you stick with this class and you're about halfway into the semester with me? You're going to be so smart, you're going to go screaming past them. Okay? Which is really what you want, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so yes, there's tutors there. However, for those of you who do struggle, there, are, um, there is a tutor who you can set up an appointment with. His name is Brock, and he is available. I, uh, I will post on the q and A. I don't think it's on the q and A. I will post on the q and A his email, and you can email him and have a one-on-one -on -one half hour or hour, I'm not sure how much time he has for you, um, tutoring session, and you could set it up weekly. So there is a one-on-one -on -one tutor for you, you alone, if you need assistance which is amazing, right? Amazing. Um, so that, that should get you there. I think you're going to find that there are so many resources here. It's heroic as far as I'm concerned. Um, OK, so I've launched um, InDesign. Yeah, don't be, don't be afraid to ask Brock for help. He's a, nice, um, he's a nice guy. He was a student of mine 100 years ago and has gone through the summer program. So he's available not just for this class, but any uh, school and media arts assistance you need in graphic design, which is awesome, right? Um, no, it's free to you. It's free. The school pays for it for you. So he's getting paid, but um, you get one-on-one -on -one tutoring. I just, how fabulous is that? Um, okay, so I've launched InDesign, and um, I'm kind of clearing things up. I, I want to walk through this process again for you regarding InDesign, just so um, just so you're familiar with it. I'm going to pause the video. Okay, I want you to see the InDesign workspace on the screen. So InDesign has different workspaces, and that's going to be probably your introduction in Chapter 1 of the book anyway. But if you work right in the upper right corner, here's the workspaces for InDesign. For this class, you're going to work in Essentials, or you might work in Advanced, or you might work in Typography. Those will all help you. You can customize workspaces in InDesign, which is pretty cool. Um, so for example, if I want Essentials, I might find that there's some tools and Essentials that are missing and I can add them. So in Essentials, and if I want to reset Essentials, I want you to see what the default is for you. So I go down here to Reset Essentials, and when you start your software, that's what it's going to look like to you. And notice on the left is your toolbox, and I think I've mentioned to you, everything's tear, you can tear everything off. And if you get stuck like you've hidden something by mistake or you move things to places you don't like, you know, if I pull these things and I make a mess, I can, again, always try and locate um, my workspace, which just disappeared on me, like down here, and reset essentials and get it all back into its lovely little order. And I, I've worked with the software so long that I like working in double columns. So 
on my toolbox, I click that little double arrow and I want a double column toolbox because that's how I find it more easily. That's my workflow. The other thing is, is when you usually start the software, particularly on campus here, that stroke, this is a fill box right here in the toolbox. That's a fill. That's a stroke. <coughs> to toggle between the two, you just hit that and that'll make the fill go to black if I toggle it back and forth. But if I want to make something active, like the stroke, I want to designate a stroke, I click on this part of it, the stroke, and pull it forward. And the reason why I'm calling attention to that is because um, every time, if you start all your, if you start InDesign before you create a new document with this set up as black stroke, everything you draw is going to have a black stroke, which is going to make you crazy. So make your stroke um, active, pull it forward, fill it with none, the red slash. So nothing is, there's no color, there's no black, there's no white, nothing. The other thing is, is you can find all Adobe software preferences under the name of the software application and go to preferences. And you could just start at general and just read through the screens and your book will walk you through this. But the other thing is, is the default also is PICAS. And we talked the other day that PICAS is an old newspaper measurement and most of your assignments are going to be measured in inches. So you might want to set your default to inches. So that's really all you really need to focus on for starters. And then if you make a new InDesign document, you go to File New, Document. That's all familiar for any computer user. The other default is this. There's, in all Adobe software, there's usually options. Show options, hide options. Showing options means it gives you more choices. I like choices. So show options. So fewer options, more options, right? Get accustomed to viewing options for everything so you know what the software does. So the default, again, for InDesign is that everything's going to be set up as a letter page. A letter size page is this, which means it's 8.5 inches wide by 11 inches tall. That's called portrait. That's called landscape. I should do it in front of the computer. That's portrait, landscape. So um, just by changing it right here, the orientation, you can change whether your page is tall or wide. The other thing is, is a book um, or a publication. This is um, a publication that is created through facing pages. Your default is also something called facing pages, and you won't work with those until you get into like chapter eight or something. So don't don't set yourself up for something to frustrate you. I would just personally turn off facing pages because it's easier to view your pages in a page panel and make sense out of them. The other thing down here you're going to learn about throughout the semester is something called a bleed and a slug. Um, does anybody remember what a slug is? We talked about it last week. No? You write notes. Yeah. Like your printer so that they know what to Susan's 100% right. It's where you write notes for your printer. And it used to be on those big artboards I showed you last week, but instead you can just do it on the side of your digital file. You'll probably never create slugs. I, the only time I use a slug now is I do a set of business cards and everybody has a different quantity of business cards that they want printed. So I make a note to the printer and I make a note to my client. This person gets this many, this person gets this many because it keeps it organized. Um, but you will always, most always, anyway, can I have your book again, please, Jared? Thank God Jared brought his book. Thank you. Um, <coughs> this is a purple cover, burgundy, whatever color you want to call it. And the ink bleeds to the edge of the page. Bleeds to the edge, nice, clean cut on the book. All the pages trim nicely. When you create a document where you want the ink to go all the way to the edge, you always create a bleed in your document. That means you're going to create graphics that extend beyond the trim and then cut, cut off at the trim size of the page and that's, that's what a bleed refers to. So most documents, you're not going to be required to do this for a while, but you may as well know what it is day one, requires you to have an eighth of an inch bleed, 0.125 inches. And there's a little chain link right here which means what I do to one it's going to make all settings the same. So if I click in that box without typing, everything became an eighth of an inch bleed. Yeah? 
All right. So you have default margins of a half an inch. That's the computer decided, the software application decided that's your default. You can change them. You can increase them incrementally by clicking up, by going down. You can make them five eighths of an inch everywhere and break the link and on the bottom it could be an inch margin. Margins are just guidelines. They don't print, they don't show, they just are guidelines for you when you design things so you don't put type touching the trim. Good? Am I going too fast? Nah. -uh. Okay. So here's our new document. We say okay. And here you're looking at what your screen's going to look like in InDesign with all your tools. The pink, the, the red line right here is the bleed. The black line is where the trim is, where it gets cut. This is your live area of the page all the way over to here. That's just a margin guideline. <clears throat> Things do something called snap to guide in Adobe software and you'll feel it. All I can say is you'll draw a box and it'll kind of tuck into a guide and you'll say, oh, I, I get what guides do now. And to create type, you use the type tool. Everything requires a box in InDesign. Type requires a box. Graphics require boxes. Everything has bounding boxes. So I can click and drag with my type tool and um, somebody tell me what the heck to type, right? And I have a typo. So you want to know how to check typos um, to create to correct typos? All I have to do is um, go to edit. Let's see if I'm right. Yep, edit spelling check spelling. And you all do this in Word. I know you do. And it found my typo for the word type. I highlight what I want it to replace. I change it. I'm done. Okay. All right. So if I want to change my typeface, I highlight it all like you would in Word. I go up here. Notice the A is active for character formatting controls. There's a little pull down menu. I can locate whatever font I want. Let's get very collegiate, and it's called um, Princeton, Prince Town, and it's all uppercase. Right here tells me the size of my characters, the font size. Right here tells me the letting from this baseline to the next baseline of type, and I can increase my type by going up incrementally, or I can just highlight this box and make it um, 200 points which exceeds the boundaries of my box. I can't tell you how many students at the beginning of the semester say, oh my god, what did I do? I lost my type. Well, you know what happened is I made my type too big for the box. I made it 200 points, so it now exceeds the box size. And we know that because right down here you see this little red symbol, which means I have text overflowing my box. I have text that's in the box and I can't see it. So I can use my black selection tool and I can grab the corner of my box. Whoops. That just rotated it. I didn't want to. Just grab the corner of my box and pull on it. There's something funky with my mouse there. And um, you can see. I still have too much type for my box, but you can see. I can also go back to the type tool, click anywhere in the box, go to edit, select all, command A. It's the same for Word. It's the same for everything, right? And I can change my type to something probably more reasonable, like 36 point, and it fits back in my box. All right? And notice if I change my letting, right now it's at a hundred, the default letting, baseline to baseline. Here's a guideline, a ruler. There's one baseline to the other baseline. I know what it is. Somebody changed my cursor size, and it's really odd. <laughs> Um, that's letting. Baseline to baseline is what your letting is. If I wish to increase my letting, not the default letting, I can increase it incrementally. I can use a little pull down menu, increase it to 60, um, increase it to 72. See what happens? All right. If I wish to change my alignment left to right in InDesign, I can go to the paragraph tool right here. And this is just like Word. Here's centered type. Here's flush right type in that text box I created. 
here's justified type where it spreads out um, border to border of the text box. And here's indenting, but I'm not going to get into all that now. So I've created type. My purpose right now is to show you how to work in InDesign to do your chapter one, to draw things and so forth. Anybody want me to draw anything particular for you? Because we know I don't like robots, right? No? Nobody has any preferences? Elephant. You want an elephant? Yeah. No problem. Go ahead. Challenge <laughs> me, right? There we go. And we're just going to make this a color. So we're going to go to the panel where it says swatches. If you don't know where to find things, go to window and say color. I want color. And I can get a color panel. I can get a gradient color panel. Or I can get a swatch panel. And Ella is going to be red type. OK. Now, you're viewing my guidelines and you're viewing my text box. Um, I'm going to make my text box smaller right here. And I'm going to start drawing Ella. Now, I can draw Ella with my pencil, or I can draw her with a pen tool. How many people are familiar with a pen tool? Nice. How many people have never used a pen tool? Pen tool is terrifying, in case you don't know. It's terrifying. But the best thing you could do with a pen tool is just get over it the first day and do it. For the pen tool, how many people, here's, here's my little mantra about the pen tool. Um, when you drive a car, Remember the first time you drove a car? You sat behind the wheel, you looked at the hood of your car, and you followed the hood of your car forward to drive, right? I don't want to, I just kept track of my car. Well, what you learn as you drive, now you maybe not, you haven't thought about it, what you learn as you drive is you don't look at the hood of your car, you look way down the road and you drive and you get in the right direction. Yeah? Okay, same thing with a pen tool. Don't look at where you are now. Look at where you're going. Because where you're going is going to determine how you move the pen tool. And, you're, and it's a very zen moment. This is the zen of the pen tool. The zen of the pen tool is, oh, I want to go there. And you watch your hand go there. And that's how you draw with a pen tool. You literally, let's pretend this is my mouse, I click. I hold my mouse down. I move my hand. Don't I look like Tai Chi right now? Click, hold the mouse down, move my pen tool, and then click where I want to be. And what that does is it creates your curves. It's really the zen of the pen tool. And to create closed shapes in the pen tool, I'll show you what you do. Can you see the screen OK? I know the lights are a little difficult. but. So let me draw Ella the elephant here. So I'm starting my pen tool. It's really making me nuts that it's so big, but I'll try and work with it. And I'm going to start at the rear, <laughs> the rear end of my little elephant, Ella. And I know Ella, and I'm thinking Ella's big. So I'm thinking she's going to come all the way over to here. Her body's going to be kind of just a big arch across the screen. So I'm pulling my anchor point up. I'm clicking. I'm holding my mouse down. I'm pulling it up. And I want to go to here. So I'm moving like this. I'm not clicking right now. And I'm ending right there. Now I'm clicking and driving until I, I mean, clicking and dragging until I get to Ella's back. All right. Now, um, I actually pulled too far to over demonstrate something, so I'm going to start again. So I'm going to click and drag to here, click and drag to here, and make smaller pulls. Click and drag and click. If you click and you don't drag, you get a straight line. If you click and drag and hold your mouse down, you get a curved line with those handles of your anchors. So here's her head which is going to be round. Oh, I made her way too big, didn't I? She's not going to fit on my page. All right, she's going to be a smaller elephant. She's going to be a baby elephant. And here's her head. And here's her head here. And here's her trunk. And I'm clicking and dragging and clicking and dragging and clicking and dragging. And then she's got a little flare at the end and a little indent for her trunk. And I'm clicking and dragging. Every, you can hear my clicks if I stop talking, right? Stop in between. I'm, I'm clicking. That's a straight line. Clicking again. 
Yeah. She won't have a double open mouth. That's her mouth, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I'm going to click like this. And I'm not sure that I've ever looked at an elephant before. I probably need to, like, rethink it. But, all right. Am I doing okay for, for winging it? See? You guys are going to realize that you get to have more fun with me by what the heck you want me to draw. draw. Um, okay. She's really, she's kind of, like, a little overweight, but oh well. She's an <laughs> elephant, right? I guess she's supposed to be. Um, so here's my elephant here, and we're going to make this her tail because I kind of screwed this up. And there's her little flare at the end of her tail. Elephants have really long tails, right? She kind of has a horse tail. She's an Ella horse. <laughs> and then um, I did that too fast, so I want to stop here. Notice that when I bring my pen to the last point that I'm creating a closed shape. You create a closed shape so you can fill it. And you want that little circle. Because when I click that closing anchor, it means I have a closed shape. And what that means is now I can go to color and not my stroke, make my fill active. And um, let me cancel that a second. And I can just eye drop what color. What color do we want, Ella? Great. Great. It's an elephant. Oh, but she's my elephant. OK, gray. <laughs> All right, I'll make her a purpley gray. But she's black. Here, let's make her, let's make that 20%, and we'll make that 30%, and we'll make that. Notice I'm just clicking and typing the numbers. Does that look kind of gray? Purple gray. Ooh. It's a little, there. Better? Better. All right. So now she needs big ears. So now I have to come back to my pen tool, which means I'm done with that shape. I'm going to start again, and here, oops, I'm going to click, make sure it's not active when I start again. So what you want to do is go to your selection tool, click off of it, go back to the pen tool, and elephants have those big floppy ears, right? And, um, and if I don't, you know, let me show you what happens if I don't make a closed shape. So that's what happens if you don't make a closed shape. It'll fill it, and if you haven't defined the rest of the edge, it's just going to go to point to point in order to fill it. So for me to finish this closed shape, i got to click on this point, click on this point, click on that point. That's her ear. And um, she's going to be offended, but uh, there. She's got kind of a blue ear. Um, so there's my elephant. And then if I want now, I'm going to go again go to my selection tool, click off of it so nothing's active, start with my pen tool again, and, um, and this I'm going to go to send to back. So I'm just making an odd random shape for her leg. I'm going to eye drop my color now that I've created that shape, and I want it a little darker because I'm going to send it to the back. And then I'm going to go to object, arrange, send to back, and put that leg behind her. I can also take my selection tool hold my option key down and I get a double arrow. See that? I can duplicate this leg because I'm too lazy to draw it again. And it's sent to the back so it's behind her body so you can't really tell, right? And um, that's the pen tool. The pen tool is scary. Interesting thing about the pen tool is you can create any shape you want and you can draw with it. This is really what Illustrator is for, not really in design. If you're making graphics, you're going to do this in Illustrator place it in InDesign. But the cool thing is, right now, I can take Ella and I can make Ella a walking billboard um, for, um, for Beyonce because it's, it's um, you know, it's Super Bowl. So we're going to find Beyonce in Google. And we're going to go to Images and we're going to steal a Beyonce image. And we'll try and keep it um, G-rated here. So we'll pick um, this one, right? And we'll go to the original image. Now understand I'm stealing a um, super low resolution image. And I just want to clarify that because you're not this semester going to work in low resolution files. You're going to work in high resolution files. But I'm just going to steal this off the internet and drag it to my desktop and close it up and go back to my InDesign document, just because you guys all want to know what this stuff does. So I've got this shape. Let me show you what my page really looks like. Here's my panel. If I double-click the arrows, it'll go back my color panel. 
in the bottom of the toolbox, this is viewed as normal. If I click here, I'm going to view in what's called preview mode, which got rid of all my guidelines. And now I have type, and I've got a drawing, a vector drawing, but I have no graphics I've placed here. For the robot assignment, you will not place graphics in it. You can play with this because everybody wants to know how you do it. But for the robot assignment, just draw stuff. You know, get used to drawing stuff. Let's make, let's make Ella's ear a gradient. So I can click on this right here, mm -hmm. her ear. I can go to Window, and I can go to Color and find Gradient. And gradients are interesting. You can um, take swatches that already exist. You can tear off panels. You can put them back to. And I can drag, let me eye drop this purple color. I can take that little swatch up there and move it to my swatch panel. See me do that? So I added the purple. I can go back to my eye drop tool. I can eye drop the elephant body. I can drag that swatch here. I can take my purple swatch to my gradient and I added that ink swatch so it's not going to be just brown, it's going to have purple. I can take this one and drag it and now I've got my gradient. And the reason this is changing color is because it's active. To apply color, to apply type, to do something it has to be in the active box. And if I don't want black in there, because I don't, I can yank that away. And if I want to put the white swatch in the center, I can just go to my gradient slider and move it. Now she has a striped ear. And now she has a striped ear with a stripe at an angle, because I changed the angle in the gradient <coughs> folder in the gradient panel. Or it's a linear gradient, I can make it a radial gradient. OK, so there's her ear. And now what I was going to show you is putting Beyonce in, in a graphic. I can do this. I can go to File. Let me make this not active, because if it's active, it'll put something in here. I don't want to. So I click off of it with a black arrow, the Selection tool. I go to File, Place. I'm going to locate on my desktop the Beyonce image, low resolution. So go to Desktop. That's the Beyonce image. My cursor is going to load with the image. You'll see in a second. Here she is. And if I just click, I've placed my image. Okay? Here's the difference. If I make the elephant active, that shape is now active. The elephant shape is a vector shape. It's active. With it active, if I go to File Place, it's going to load Beyonce in my elephant. <laughs> and if I want Beyonce to fill up the side of my elephant, you know, like those cards that have that wrap that do advertising, um, I can keep my elephant active. I can go to Object Fitting and I can fill my frame proportionately. And now Beyonce is all over the place. Yeah? Now, she's low resolution. You probably can't see that in the back, big chunky pixels of stuff. But um, that's how you put an image inside a vector shape. All right? And that's way advanced. This is just so you know how to tinker around and be fearless when you do your first assignment and create some fun. Yeah, Tony. I am, but you know what? We're going to do that much later in the semester. It's good that you know how to do it. You can, you know, you, Tony said, can I teach you how to find high resolution <laughs> images in Google? And the answer is if you type high resolution image, you'll find a high resolution image in Google. And, and Tony was in um, my 110 class last semester, and 110, we didn't focus on things for print. We did focus on high resolution images. But you're going to focus on designing things for print. And most things you find on the web really translate to something about the size of a postage stamp. So what you generally find on the internet isn't going to take care of you. Um, tell me your name. Charlotte. Charlotte. Um, so the image is only on his, you, um, like the, it's not on the ear and it's not on the... The ear is a separate piece. Remember I drew the ear separately? And I drew the leg separately? And the elephant I drew in one shape, so it only filled that. Now, you want, you want me to show you more magic just for fun? You guys having fun? Yeah. All right. Um, you go to Edit, Undo, and it's going to move all of the body parts back. Edit, Undo, um, Edit, Undo, which is Command-Z. 
what I was going to show you for fun, because you asked this, is there's a tool in InDesign and in Illustrator, which I find I use a lot. And it's under um, Object Layout. And you'll come to know this stuff. You can also Google you know, all the tools. It'll be in your book, but all the tools in InDesign. There's zillions of them. It does so much. It's super powerful. But there's something called the Pathfinder tool. And the Pathfinder tool is kind of a no-brainer. It's like you don't really need to know what each tool does because, one, you can run your cursor over it, and it tells you. Um, so I can put my cursor over any of these things, and it tells me. But what I was going to show you is there's a tool that unites all these different shapes together. So if I highlight this, I don't know if it works with a graphic in it, but we're going to find out. If I highlight all those shapes, which is the elephant, the two legs, and the ear, and I go to the Unite tool in Pathfinder, it made it a single shape. What it did is it got rid, it applied, for me now I know what it does, it applied the color of the most foreground um, shape, right? And that's what I got. Now I got my silhouette. How does that change your vector? Does it separate or does it still separate vectors? No, it lights? united everything. So now my vector. See, this is Mark's <coughs> area. Mark's worked with something called Corel Draw, which is a vector and CAD programs. So my vector is all the same. And let me change my, um, let me change this to an outline so you can see for, um, I mean, stroked. I want to make this elephant stroked. And if I change the stroke weight, it's up here. And I'll make it big. If you want to change a stroke, <coughs> and you see what it did? It united everything, but something didn't overlap, which is why I have that little random thing there. That's random. But if I wanted to change this shape, for example, let's say I decided that um, my elephant had a really big mouth. I could click on that little teeny point right here. I'm in what's called the direct selection tool, the white arrow. And I can grab one anchor point in my drawing and pull on it because Ella is a loudmouth elephant. <laughs> and um, there we go. I can decide that I can select just the end of her trunk. And she's got an itch, so she's going to scratch her head. And I can move it there. And if I don't like, um, I'm going to close these. If it's not rounded enough for me, I can grab this shape, and there's this handle here, and I can pull on the handle and change the arches. And that's how you play with vector shapes, with these handles. And it's hard. And um, it's all about practice for vector stuff. And we really don't get into this in InDesign very much. Like halfway through the semester, you'll play with some vector files. But, but it's fun to know what the pen tool does. And particularly if you're drawing robots. The other thing is, you know, now that you know the Pathfinder tool, you can create, if I hold my shift key down and um, my option key or my alt key, I'll get shapes that are um, proportional. So I get a full circle. And here's a pink one. And same thing. Here's another one. And whoops. Let's fill it with color so we can see where it went. And here's another one, and we'll fill it with color. I can take these shapes. You can do your entire drawing, which is why they have you do a robot as your first assignment. I can take this entire drawing and um, you know, make things just by using shapes. I don't need to bravely go where no one goes with that pen tool, right? Um, so you can draw using just shapes. For your first assignment, I would love for you to create some fun composition. I would love for you to explore color. I would love for you to take this shape here, this golden shape. And it doesn't show up in Essentials, but you can go to Window and Effects. Now that I'm showing you, you know where it exists. And you can change, if you know Photoshop, here's Layer Blending Modes. You can um, multiply colors. So merge the orange color on the green color. Or I can leave it to Normal, and I can make it see-through with 50% opacity, and you can blend colors. I'm applying 50% opacity to the green right now. And you can see you can create all these pretty colors. right? So I do want you to play. You are required to use two different typefaces. Again, if you don't know what to do, did I lose my Moodle? Here we go. If you don't know what to do, you go to your assignment, 
you go to the instructions and you read it. And what you are required to do on the score sheet for chapter one, it'll tell you. Watch it. You need to put your name on it. You need to use color, shapes, and freeform shapes. You can use freeform shapes in InDesign by taking the pencil. Let me add a stroke to it so you can see as I'm drawing. And um, here's Ella again with my pencil. Not as good. And I'm holding my mouse down as I'm doing this drawing. And um, I haven't released it yet. I don't know that you can see it probably in the back. You probably can't. But that's my elephant shape. See, don't you feel less embarrassed about your own drawing skills now? And um, there's my elephant. OK, so that was the pencil tool. And I just clicked. And I drew with a pencil tool, and I didn't stop until I created a closed shape. Pencil tool is kind of fussy. But you're required, back to Moodle here, um, back to, I'm sorry, back to your score sheet. You are required to have color, shapes, freeform shapes. Make a composition out of it. Have fun. Um, but you are also required to do two different fonts and two different font sizes. So I know you've worked with type, and you've worked with color and shapes, OK? And make it look like you put a little effort into it. This is the easiest assignment you will have the entire semester. You should all get 100% on it. It should be a cakewalk for you, even if the software is scary. Just put some effort into it. All right. Now, here's what I do want you to see. I'm in InDesign. I'm done with my document. You file save your document. It always ends with a suffix INDD. What you should probably do is call it um, your name underscore <coughs> chapter one and save your document. Then what you should do is get accustomed to packaging your files. Because if you get accustomed to it on day one, you'll never lose your fonts or your graphics. I have no graphics in here anymore. Beyonce disappeared, right? So now I just have a font that pr prints, prints town font. So now I've saved my document. Now I want to package it. It's going to take my fonts, my graphics I've used, and put them in a folder. <laughs> and you want to make sure that you have no yellow warning signs, which means you're in trouble. If you have yellow warning signs, it means you have a missing font, or you, bless you, you modified a file or something like that. So I'm going to package it. I'm going to put it on the desktop. This says if you want to send notes to the printer about information, it creates a, what's called a readme file. You know what I mean by readme files, yeah? A readme file, when you get software, there's always a text file that says readme. And the readme, R-E-A-D, readme. And it always means, look at this before you do anything. I'm going to tell you what you need to do. So this software creates a readme file. It's just a text document called instructions. And you can ignore it. And then it's going to make a folder. And it's going to copy your fonts. It's going to copy your graphics. It's going to update your graphic links when you package it. This says, we pay for software. We pay for fonts. Please don't steal them. Don't take the fonts that you're extracting from this document and sell them to your friends. Tony's laughing at me. OK? And you say, OK. And now it's done. And if I close this document, it has been saved right here on the desktop. I made a folder. Let's go to desktop. Here's my TORF folder. It copied the InDesign document. It put a new one in the folder, the most recent. I have no graphics, so there's no links. And it took my two fonts and put them in here and copied them. So if I needed this file at home, if you need it at home, you would take the package folder with you wherever you go. All right. And this file is now extra. I don't need it. So I can just take this file and I can drag it to the trash. I don't need it. Now the other thing is, I would look at this and I'd say, um, I'm going to score myself. Remember where I received this. I got this on the instruction on the assignment page here in Moodle. So again, how do I find this? I go to the assignment page, click on the link, download the score sheet. It's different for every chapter. 
Hey, John. Hi. And um, where am I? I am, oh, I'm filling out my form. So I'm in Acrobat right now. So did I put my name on my printout? No. Okay, I get a zero there. That's okay with you. It's okay with me, right? Um, artwork includes color usage, shapes, freeform shapes. Yeah, I did that. All right. It's not very excellent, but I did it. Um, did I use two different fonts and two different font sizes? No. I'm only going to get 15 points on that. The artwork appears that the student made an effort to be creative. No, that was pretty mediocre. I mean, it was creative, but it wasn't quite polished and finished enough. So I would probably give myself about half a score. So now I add this up and I get a really low D, right? And now I save my score sheet. File save. And if that's okay with you, okay. If you don't want that and you want your score to say 100, go back and fix it, right? Go back and fix it. And um, if it's five minutes before the deadline and you're not going to upload fast enough, stick with your 60% rather than a zero. I won't grade your work without the score sheet though. No score sheet, no grade. That's because I want you to read the score sheet to know what's required to be proficient on the assignment. Everybody comprehend that? All right, that's the purpose of it. Now your confusion is, how do I, I can only upload one PDF file, which do I upload? Well, you could upload them both by making a multiple page document, many pages in one PDF. There's two ways to do that. One is this. I can open my InDesign document um, of right here. I can open it. I can go to the page panel or window pages and I can add a page. Remember how intuitive I said it is? What do you want to do? Oh, I want to add a page. Well, I'll go locate a page and add it, right? That's all I did. I clicked on the page and I added it. And in InDesign, there's all these little pullouts in the upper right corner. If you click on that, you'll also get all the options you need for something. So I could insert pages here, and I could put it after or before. I can add 12 pages right now. And if we look at my document, I now created a 15-page document. And if I want to delete my pages, well, what pages do I want to delete? I can click on something, which means page 3 is active, hold my shift key down all the way to the bottom of the page, and go to the little trash can. You probably can't see this in the back. There's a little trash can right here, and I can trash all those pages. And now I just have a few left. Hold my shift key down, trash the pages, and get rid of them. Right. And the reason why I added a page is, if I double click now, I'm on page two. I can do this. I can go to File, Place, File, Place. In case that score sheet isn't working well for you, it probably got put into Downloads, where everything gets put. So I'll go to Downloads. I'll View by Date Modified. Here's the score sheet. You see it? I can take the score sheet, and I can place. So let me do this again. File, place, locate the score sheet, which was in work, downloads, here. Open it. My cursor loads with a score sheet, like the score sheet's a graphic, and I can click and drag, whoops, and there's my score sheet, right? And now I place the score sheet in here. And if you can't fill out the form of the score sheet, you can always make a little type box, click and drag, and type a number, oops, type a number there. Probably can't see it in the back. Go to the character panel, make it big, right? Oh, and it overflowed my box, so big, there. You all follow that? Again, you have to save your file, file save. And now I have a two-page document. So that's one way to make a two-page document. And now I can export it as a PDF in InDesign, file, Adobe PDF preset. High quality is what I want. And notice it took the name of my file and added the words PDF instead of INDD for InDesign. I recommend that you always 
package first, then make a PDF, and put your PDF in your package folder so you don't lose things. And right now I'm saving my file. And again, we had that little conversation about when you mail a letter, do you open the mailbox to make sure it went down the chute? You have those kinds of mailboxes? No, you don't? You've seen American mailboxes? Little blue things? You have a little door? Put things in them? You don't have that? You're from Sweden? No. Where are you from? I've seen them. Where are you from? I'm from here. Are you from here? You've seen them, though, huh? Okay. And anyway, so you click PDF pre... pre um, View PDF after exporting, export all pages, you export it, it will launch Acrobat Professional for you, and here's my page one and my page two, right? There's another way to do this. The other way to do this is to not have this two-page InDesign document. I'm deleting my page. I just have a one-page document. I'm going to save it. I'm going to make my elephant a PDF one page, because you're going to have lots of individual assignments and you might want to know how to do this. So here's my elephant one. So I'm going to call this assignment 1A, because you'll end up having a PDF of 1A, 1B, 1C, or let me say 2A, 2B, 2C, right? <clears throat> Save it. There's only one page. I'll view it after exporting and make sure it looks good. It's good. Now here's mm -hmm. how you can um, create multiple files. So I can close this. I can use Acrobat Professional. Acrobat Reader will not do this. Only Acrobat Professional. I'm going to file create. Combine all the PDF files into one, a single PDF. Add files. Locate your files. So I put it on the desktop in the folder. So here's my elephant file. Know what I do? I made 1A, didn't I? Here's my elephant file. And then I want to add my score sheet, so I add another file. Um, and that was in the work folder. That was in the downloads folder, remember? Date, I'll view by date modify, but I'll look at downloads folder. And How do I view by date modified with this? View by date modified, there we go. So found my date modified right there. Add my files. You can change the sequence. My preference is, is that you make the score sheet first. So I can highlight the score sheet and move it up. I just moved it up. I combine the files. It's going to call it a binder. Please don't submit something called Binder. Um, and right now I will save this as, and you might want to call it, um, um, again, Torf. You're going to have to watch your naming. Just get used to something um, easy for you. Um, O1, and it, O1, and you might want to call it <laughs> Final or something like that so you know it's your composite of images of your files and save it. And you want me to review how to upload to Moodle one more time? Yeah, okay. Um, so now I've saved it. Actually, my bad part is I don't know where I saved it. So I'm going to go back to Acrobat Professional, which is lovely. It has something called Open Recent File, because I don't know where the heck I put that file. So I'll open my file and pay attention to where I save it. So save as, and I'm going to, again, put it on the desktop in my package folder so I don't lose it because I didn't know where I put it before. And it's saved there. So now I have nowhere to locate it. So now in Moodle, this is the assignment instruction page, but it's not where you upload. This is the upload page in Moodle. Make sure, I think I've told you this before, when you upload something, you know it's uploaded if it has an X next to it. If you upload it and John and I make comments, we're going to put them here. We're going to put the comments here for you on this page. So if something is incorrect and it's before the window closes and John and I have time to grade it, please don't send it up there. Say you did half the work and want us to look at it and try and finish everything perfectly so all we have to say is, nope, you're done. 
Wonderful, you're done. Um, so anyway, we're gonna click the X. I'm gonna delete this to show you how to upload it. Again, you can edit and um, I can say here is Ella. Enjoy. Ella. And save changes there. And then browse to upload, locate the PDF file, the final one, that's the composite. Name it so you know, because you won't preview it. Um, open it, and then wait. Now you gotta upload this file. Click upload, and now you wait. And this is spooling up here, and it takes a while. And this is a super, super small file. Some of your files are gonna be extremely large, and they will take a long time which is why I don't want you to wait to the final minute to upload. And now I have an X next to it, which means I know it's submitted. Okay. And if you write John and I a note, John has put his email under the Q&A. If you write me a note, don't write it to Pipeline. It'll just not get seen. Um, if you write me a note, write it here at victoria at victoriatorf.com, and I'll respond to you quickly. Just put the class name um, in your question. And if I'm in front of my computer, I'll try and address it immediately. Okay? So, that was a lot. That was a lot. Are there questions about what? Yes? Can you just open up a file and then, like, save the um, questionnaire on Photoshop in a PDF and then put that in the file and then put the other thing that you got from InDesign here, design? Put that in the file, and so then it's on your desktop in a new file, and it's, and then do it that way, or does it all have to come from InDesign? Um, all right. The PDF form for scoring is a PDF, so you should okay. fill it out and just save it, and you should be done. You don't need to put it in Photoshop. That would be just like baking a cake and then sticking it back in the oven. Why, right? So you save it. Just save the PDF file. So when you get the score sheet, right. when you get the score sheet, this is not your score sheet. Um, when you get the score sheet right here, score sheet, there we go. When you get the score sheet, fill it out. Put your name on it, first and last. You're going to do it perfectly. Or you're going to believe that what you submit is perfect until we tell you otherwise, right? But hopefully you will have looked at all these details, and by the time you get here, yes, it's going to be 100. And I want you to score it. That's not for me to fill out. It's for you to fill out. And then all you have to do is save. Oh, it's still a PDF. That. It's still a PDF file. But you go and you find your Acrobat. That's what you oh, use. Acrobat Professional. We'll do it, yes. Okay. If you don't have Acrobat Professional, you can place it as a graphic and make a little text box on it. No reason to go into Photoshop. Stay away from Photoshop. You can't go to Photoshop till week nine. Okay. <laughs> yeah, John? Isn't that a PDF form? It is a PDF form. It was created as a form. I understand they're not perfect forms. Then you should be able to throw it out in Reader and save it. Okay. There you if, go. It's a form. if it's a form, you can fill out in Reader. Um, and then the other thing is, is if you don't have Acrobat Professional to combine files, that's when you can make those extra pages in InDesign like I showed you and place PDF files like a graphic. That help you? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Tell me your name. I'm sorry. Rebecca. Rebecca. So do we get the same score sheet back so we can see exactly what the error is? Um, that's a really excellent question. What John and I will end up doing is we'll say, um, you have font, we won't give you this game, we won't mark the score sheet, but we'll tell you where you missed something. Like your, the Reedy, that one ad, that little florist ad I showed you, uh, that's probably it, yeah. This one, we'll mostly, we're not going to say this font is incorrect, we'll say check it out. We're going to send you just back to the drawing board on that one. Um, and, then, and then you're just going to have to use your eyes to figure it out very specifically. But if there's something missing, yeah, we'll flag it for you and tell you. 
it's really, um, it's cumbersome to re-upload the InDesign document. If there's a lot of issues, you know, usually if you've only submitted half an assignment, there's no reason for me to fill out your form again. It's incomplete. Um, if you need help with things, ask us. If you're struggling, ask us, right? You know, for this chapter, for this week, um, this is not it. You're just, you're just drawing and playing and you're drawing Ella the elephant or George the gorilla or whatever. Um, so this week you're going to be fine. By Wednesday you'll be fine. And, and actually, since I'm tired of talking and you have a half hour, I would suggest that I'm not going to lecture anymore. I'm going to stop where I'm at and John and I are available. I'm going to let you all get this assignment underway. Launch in design. Use the last half hour of the class to create the assignment. And, um, and then Wednesday we'll have our further lecture on, um, you know, kind of getting started in graphic design. So why don't you use the next half hour for InDesign? Are there more questions anybody has based on what I demoed or the workflow? No? Okay. So great. So use the half hour. Maybe you'll have made some a dent in this. Okay. And John and I are available right now to help you. So I'm going to stop the video.